Hi everyone! First of all, I'm really sorry to keep you guys waiting for almost nine months for the next video in this tutorial series, but hopefully now other things are sorted out and I'll be able to record more videos for this series, right? So now let's get back to where we left off. We left off with a pretty basic configuration of Jenkins running on the CentOS server with a very basic Hello World job that does nothing but printing Hello World into the console. And now before we continue to build more advanced jobs, what I really want to do is to secure this instance to make sure that it is not directly exposed to the port and internet like it is right now. I want to put an Nginx reverse proxy just like we did before in front of this server and I cannot guys stress enough how important it is to secure your Jenkins instance. Because you saw what Jenkins can do. Effectively, whoever gets the control to this kind of a screen can go and create any kind of job at all and execute any commands on behalf of Jenkins user on your Linux machine. And moreover, once we will configure Jenkins to be able to deploy to your real servers, the person who gets the access to your Jenkins can effectively get an access to your production servers and pretty much cause a disaster. And here I'm speaking from the experience because I saw one of Jenkins instances being attacked and an attacker could get an access to configuring the jobs, but luckily the attack surface was quite small. All attacker did at the end of the day was to start mining some cryptocurrency on victims build server. But even this kind of penetration is quite quite unpleasant. So please guys, whenever you're installing Jenkins, first thing, think about how you will secure it and don't put some 12345 password as your admin account. So now hopefully I scared you enough to treat your Jenkins server pretty much like your production server and to imply the same security measures to your Jenkins server, let's go to the server and start configuring it. And just a quick heads up guys, I have recorded this bit of video that you're listening to right now already after the rest of the tutorial is complete, because it seems to be that the whole configuration process is relatively complex, one of the most complex bits that we have done throughout this course so far, right? So if you are in the rush, if you just want to make your Jenkins work together with Nginx and be secure and uh, work through HTTPS, just go and grab the configuration in my GitHub account. You can find it's in my GitHub repository called EasyIO. If you go to the conf Nginx folder, there you will be able to see the Jenkins configuration that we are writing throughout this video. This config is not very big, it's based on the previous configs that we did before, and the most important bit of this config is obviously here, location forward slash. So, so these parameters are what you need. However, if you want to learn why this config works and why we need these parameters, please stay with this video. And I'm pretty sure that you will learn a thing or two about configuring Nginx for slightly more complex scenarios. So without further ado, let's go back to our main video and learn how to configure Nginx to work with Jenkins. I assume that you are following the previous videos from this tutorial series, and in this case you will have all the basic tools already installed on your server, but if you are not, then at least make sure that you're installing Apple release, because it will be required to install Nginx and CertBot later. Hit enter for your machine, for me it's already installed, if you do not have it, execute this command. Now, the first step is to install Nginx. And in this video, I will not go into the details of how Nginx works, what it does, and why it's good to have it, because there is another video at the beginning of this series. So if you need a little bit more detailed explanations, please go and check out that video instead. So what we're going to do here is yum minus y install Nginx. And now we have Nginx installed on this machine. And of course, if we are rebooting, we want to make sure that Nginx starts automatically on the machine startup. So systemctl enable Nginx. Usually I would go on and start Nginx immediately, but right now I don't want to do that because first I want to request SSL certificates and change the configuration of Nginx before I will start it up. So first things first, let's request an SSL certificate. So to do that, as usual, we will install ThirdBot. And once ThirdBot is installed, we are requesting a certificate. for the domain build nanogram IO. Next, I'll enter my email address and some other answers to certbot questions. 
And just after a few seconds, I have my certificate in place and uh, I'm ready to start configuring Nginx. In this video, I will not go and configure Nginx from the scratch because we had already a few videos in this course that explained the basics of Nginx configuration. So I assume that you guys know how to configure HTTPS in Nginx and how to configure basic reverse proxying in Nginx. And if you don't, please check out the other videos from this course. They explain these aspects with a lot of details. So in this video, I will talk about the specific configuration that you will need to add to your Nginx reverse proxy config in order for it to work nicely with Jenkins. And for this reason, I would not start from the blank configuration because it would just take too long to explain all these details. Rather, I would start from the configuration that we already did in past videos. So I'm leaving my connection to the server opened in the other tab and uh, I'm going to my local folder where I have a bunch of Nginx configurations. And what I'll do, I'll copy my basic HTTPS config template to the template that I will call Jenkins.conf. Now let's go and check out what is in this configuration. So let's remember, the basic configuration contains of two blocks. First is for port 80, that does nothing but redirects to HTTPS. So we want all the connection to go through HTTPS. Afterwards, we have the SSL HTTPS connection configured with some details about where to get the certificates. And obviously, since we're now configuring not a Nanogram IO server, but build Nanogram IO server, we need to remember to update paths to certificates as well as server names in this config. So let's go and do that right away. Server name will be build nanogram IO and don't forget to change it for your server name. Obviously, you're not configuring my server, you're configuring your own, we will not need root directive here, because our server will not be serving static files at all, all the static files will be served by Jenkins, it could be an interesting exercise to offload the serving of static files from Jenkins to Nginx, but truly you don't need it because this server will not be under the huge load from hundreds of users. Usually the server will be accessed by just a few clients. So we don't need to optimize that. So feel free to remove the root directive. And uh, yeah, don't forget to update the server name here, build nanogram IO, the next step is to update the certificate pass. And here you only just need to update the server name because the pass that third bot is generating is always the same. And it includes the server name that this certificate belongs to. So it's going to be build nanogram IO. Next, all the parameters will remain pretty much the same. And we discussed these parameters in the HTTPS video. And finally, here's the most interesting part, right? So instead of location API, we want the location root to be proxy passing to our Jenkins instance, which is available under localhost 8080. And that would be a pretty minimal reverse proxying configuration, which will unfortunately not quite work for Jenkins. So what we'll do first is we will describe our server in a special upstream directive so that we can also describe the properties of the connection to that server. So let's go all the way up at the very beginning of the file, just as we did for load balancing videos, we will add a block called upstream, where is the name Jenkins. And that block will include a single server, which will be localhost 8080. And now once we define the upstream, it's a good idea to start actually using it. So let's go back to our location block and replace proxy pass from the exact address to the address of our upstream. That's going to be HTTP Jenkins. Now that looks already much better. Now one important thing to know is that once Nginx is connecting to the upstream like Jenkins, it will use the basic HTTP 1.0. And for every connection to the upstream, it will open a new TCP connection and close it once the connection is done, which is not very optimal. So what we want to do is to configure slightly more advanced communication schema between our Nginx and Jenkins. And to do that, we'll tell Nginx to start using HTTP 1.0 point one and use keep alive connection, which means that Nginx will establish several long living TCP connections and will not re establish a new TCP connection for every HTTP connection. And that should save us some server resources. So let's add some more parameters to this location block. The first one is proxy HTTP version. And that's going to be 1.1. That tells Nginx to start using HTTP 1.1. The next one going to be proxy set header. 
And we want to set header called connection to an empty string, to nothing. So we want to clear that header. And why we're doing that? Because by definition, if the connection header is not set in HTTP, it will use keep alive connections. And that is exactly what we want to achieve. Now, before we move on, we want to add an additional parameter here to the upstream. And that is a parameter called keep alive. And this will be the number of connection that is allowed to be idle to the given upstream. Now, the downside of keep alive connections is that in theory, it can spawn loads of active connections, which also might take some server resources out. So what we want to do is to limit the number of idle connection to some small number like 16. And that is exactly what this directive does. So now keep alive will be configured properly for this server. Okay, but unfortunately, that's not yet the last step of configuration. Let's go back to our location block and uh, look at it. So why we need this additional piece of configuration, it's because of Jenkins itself and Jenkins is trying to be nice and trying to check actively if the reverse proxy configuration is correct. And in order to do that, Jenkins needs to know how the connection was originally established. Was it established through HTTP or through HTTPS? And in order to figure that out, Jenkins will use a pretty standard header that is called X forwarded proto. But if that header is not present, Jenkins, unfortunately, will not be able to properly test for reverse proxy configuration. And it will report that your reverse proxy configuration is broken, which will give you a big red banner across the page, which doesn't look nice at all. So what we'll do here is we'll add another header to make Jenkins happy. Proxy set header. Oh, I'm hoping that I do not do any typos here. Otherwise, it will take some time to debug the nginx config. And uh, if you have tried debugging nginx configs, you probably know it's a bit of a pain in the back. Forwarded. Proto. By the way, guys, if you are following this video, don't try to just type the config values unless you want to do that for educational purposes. I will publish the resulting configuration in GitHub. So you'll be able just to copy and paste to your server, replacing, of course, server names with your own. Okay, so X forwarded proto will have a value of scheme which will be either HTTP or HTTPS. In our case, it will always be HTTPS. Okay, so for most applications, this configuration will be pretty much enough, but not for Jenkins for one simple reason. In Jenkins, there is another mode of connecting to Jenkins is from the command line. So what you can do is instead of opening a web browser and going to your Jenkins instance and clicking on the buttons, you could use the command line interface and command line client that is provided by Jenkins. And that is oftentimes used for automation or bulk updating the instances, etc. So generally speaking, in this course, we will not need that feature, I think. I don't plan to cover that because it's quite an advanced subject, but it's nice to have your configuration supporting that scripting abilities right away. And effectively, what we need to do is two things. First thing is disable buffering because by default, Nginx will buffer the requests and responses before sending them to the upstream. So we need to disable that in order for this command line tool to work properly. And second thing, we will need to increase the timeouts for the long running operations to complete successfully. So this configuration, I took it from the official Jenkins guide that pretty much describes how to configure Jenkins, all of the parameters for Jenkins. But after reviewing that config that they have on their wiki about Jenkins configuration, I found it well. Uh, so there are some parameters that just look weird. So for example, proxy redirect here is set to default explicitly, why it is default by default, right? Same for the send file, it is off by default, you don't need to do that. And uh, there are also some word combinations of parameters. So for example, they are setting max stamp file size, but this file size is only used for buffering, and they are disabling buffering in just few lines below. So I don't really like their config. So what I will do is I will just take the parts that are disabling the buffering and increasing the connection timeouts, and I will copy it into our configurations, maybe also this line that increases the maximum size of a request to 10 megabytes. Alright, so I'll take this block. I'll copy that. I'll go to my configuration, I will paste it as is. 
The names of these parameters are quite self-explanatory. So client max body size defines how big can be the request body, which is set to 10 megabytes. Client body buffer size, I'm not sure why they included this line in their configuration. It sets the internal size of the buffer that Nginx will be using. I'm not sure how that will impact the experience with the command line interface, but they are recommending it and I don't have anything against it. So I'll just keep it here. Proxy connection timeout, by default it's 60 seconds, they are increasing it to 90 seconds, and some other timeouts as well, send timeout and read timeout. Proxy buffering is set to off, all right, I agree with that. And the last bit is proxy request buffering. So this one is about response buffering, this one is about request buffering, also set to off. And the final parameter that Jenkins guys are setting in their official wiki page is proxy set header connection to nothing, which we already did, so it's safe to remove this line. Now, there is only a couple more aspects left for this configuration to work properly with Jenkins. I know this have been a long pass, but we're almost there, guys, so stay with me. So the first part is an extremely unintuitive behavior of Nginx configuration. See these parameters, proxy set header host x real IP x forwarded for, and they are defined on the level of a server. So it feels quite natural that if they are defined on the level of the server, then in the nested location it will kind of be inherited, so you don't need to copy paste them over. But in reality Nginx works in a slightly different manner. It will indeed reuse this proxy set header parameters from the server block, but only if there are no proxy set header parameters within the location block. And since we are having proxy set header connection and proxy set header x forwarded proto, these parameters, these three guys, three lines here, will be effectively ignored. So what we will need to do is to take these three lines and copy them somewhere after the proxy set header connection, for example here. And this way, these headers will be properly passed to Jenkins. Now the final bit is related to security, so it is important to get right. In order to implement cross-site request forgery protection, Jenkins is using crumbs. Those crumbs essentially are just randomly generated strings, but they are passed through the custom header. Now with Nginx in front, Nginx is trying to be smart here, and if there is a header that Nginx does not recognize, it will filter it out, so it will not transfer that header to the upstream, in this case to Jenkins. As a result, Jenkins server will not be able to see the crumbs that client is sending. So in order to prevent this, we need to tell explicitly to Nginx, please do not do anything with headers that you do not recognize. So let's go here on the server level and add another line, ignore invalid headers and set the value to off. Now with this, Nginx will pass unknown headers as is to the upstream, and this is exactly the behavior that we want. And that will be pretty much it. This is a complete configuration that Jenkins should be happy about. And our next step is to save this file and upload it to the server. So let's save the file, exit, and then we'll do scp to copy that configuration to our server. That will be jenkins.conf to root build nanogram.io. And we want to save this file in etsy nginx confd build nanogram io.conf. So as you notice, I like to save my configurations under the same name as the server that is configured inside of that file and ending with the conf because that's what nginx is looking for. Right, so let's copy that file to the server. Done. Now, before we start the server, there is one more bit of configuration that we need to add, otherwise we will get 503 errors in the server, is to allow Nginx to connect to other networking services on our server. So in order to do that, let's first check that SE Linux, Secure Linux, is enabled on this machine. Get Enforce and it's enforcing. So if you don't know what is SE Linux, there is another video on this course that explains SE Linux, but basically it's another security layer. And right now it is enabled. And by default, this security layer will prevent Nginx from connecting to anything at all on your server. So what we need to do is set a parameter on this security configuration to allow Nginx connecting to Jenkins. So set SE bool, so setting secure Linux Boolean persistent dash p httpd can network connect and that will be on save it 
And finally, the moment of truth, systemctl start nginx. Now there is no errors, so hopefully everything went all right. systemctl status nginx. It is running, which gives us hope that the configuration went all right. So let's go and open our newly configured and secured built nanogram IO. So far, so good. Guys, what an amazing feeling when you upload a new server configuration and it works from the first time. Let's check one more thing. Let's go to manage Jenkins and open this page. And ah, you see this banner that I was talking about. If something is wrong with your configuration, that's where you will see it. So go to manage Jenkins. If you see this red stripe, it means that the configuration is not complete. And there is indeed one little thing that is left to do in order for our configuration to be perfect. Let's go to system configuration and choose configure system. Now scroll down all the way to Jenkins URL. This value should be changed to a new Jenkins URL that we have just configured. So first of all, we have HTTPS and we don't have 8080, we have a standard HTTPS port. So let's put it this way, apply the configuration, should see saved, save the configuration, and you'll go back to the initial page. Let's go back to manage Jenkins to make sure that the warning disappeared. And now since you don't see the warning, it means that Jenkins is indeed happy with Nginx config and it will be working perfectly. And it will be working perfectly from this moment on. Now remember, the whole point of putting Jenkins behind Nginx was to make sure that Jenkins is not accessed directly from internet and the only way to access Jenkins is through Nginx and through HTTPS. However, our Jenkins instance is still listening to port 8080 that is opened to everyone. So we can check it out, netstat, tln, to list the open ports and you'll see that port 8080 is opened everywhere to everyone. So what we want to do here instead is to make Jenkins listen to 127.0.0.1 so that it is not directly accessible from outside. And doing that is very simple. We just need to update Jenkins configuration and it is in Etsy, sysconfig and Jenkins. Let's open that file and scroll all the way down. This file has loads of comments, but not really a huge amount of configuration. So scroll down to the end of this file and find the parameter called Jenkins listen address. By default, it is 0, 0, 0, 0, so pretty much all the interfaces, but we'll change it to 127, 0, 0, 1. Let's save this config and restart Jenkins. Now that Jenkins is up and running again, let's execute net stat tln again, just the same command. And now we'll see that Jenkins is listening to 127.0.0.1.8080. So this port is not anymore accessible from internet. To make sure that this configuration didn't break any of our previous setup, let's go back to Jenkins and uh, try to access it. If we see the prompt, that means that everything is working fine. So let's go sign into Jenkins. Let's go check out Manage Jenkins to make sure that we don't see that ugly red banner saying that something is wrong. And uh, just out of curiosity, we can go back to the dashboard and check the Hello World job and make sure that everything is working. So you see the job details or Hello World, save it. Let's run the job, refresh the page and see that job successfully completed. I think so far it has been the most complex bit of configuration that we did throughout this course. So in the next videos, we'll see how to make Jenkins work with our Node.js application and configure slightly more interesting jobs. Thank you very much and see you in the upcoming videos. Bye!